welcome back to another Luca Vision video. Yes, and another Flash Black Friday where I look back into the past of Eurovision. And this is episode three. And in today's video, I'm having a little look at Luxembourg. Now, I have no idea what Luxembourg sound like because when I turned into Eurovision, Luxembourg had turned out of Eurovision. So I literally have no idea what to expect here. You guys said, Luke, why don't you try Luxembourg? So I thought, I'll try Luxembourg. Thanks guys, because you guys are yet again my encyclopedias to the history of Eurovision. I don't know what this is going to be like, so I'm excited to give it a little go. So I thought, what do I react to? So I had a little look on YouTube and I found a compilation by the official Eurovision Song Contest channel. And it's a compilation of Luxembourg's biggest entry. And when I say biggest, I think they mean based on stats and positions and things like that. So this is going to be their best entries from 1956 all the way to 1993 because after looking into their history I've seen that they haven't participated since 1993 which is a shame because I think the more the merrier the more countries we have the more songs we have we could find some real gems here I think the main issue was funding problems and after looking on Wikipedia it said that there may have been a potential collaboration with San Marino so that would have been epic we all want you back Luxembourg stop putting off the inevitable come back and it's pretty safe to say that all of their songs are in French, so that's pretty cool. We need more native languages in Eurovision. After delving into the facts, I've seen that they've won five times, which means only two countries have actually beat their record, which is Ireland and Sweden. Who would have thought that Luxembourg was so successful and they're not in it? This is a crime! Come back, Luxembourg! So, as always, I'm really excited to delve in and I'm really excited to find some hidden gems and find a whole new love for Luxembourg. So, enough chat, let's react. I am a little bit nervous actually because it's kind of like fear of the unknown and they've been hyped up a little bit now after looking at their history so let's hope they deliver. Let's go. She's got that whole dramatic head shake going on. Love you. Oh she's got a nice voice. Sorry Peppy. For the time as well it's pretty good. Great arrangement there. This came forth. These songs so far, they do have a memorable melody. They stick out a bit. Oh, those vocals. Powerhouse. They came forth again out of 21. Very handsy. <laughs> She's feeling that, you can tell. This is classy. Wow. It looks a bit like my dad. Dad? That you? Oh, I'm loving this old crooner kind of swing jazz music. Grrr. Oh, that voice. Oh, I love this kind of music. Oh. 1986, this came third out of 20. This record though. Nice hair. Now this song is big. I like her hair. She's very stagey, musical theatre girl. First out of 16 in 1961. You can't beat this type of music, can you? This old crooner. It's such an underrated type of music. Oh, this came first again, F17 in 1973. Look at it. This is everything music should be. The orchestra behind her, her emotive voice. She loves it as well. Look at her. Oh. Ah, first of 18. She has the typical 60s look about her, doesn't she? Very Dusty Springfield. Ah, oh, this is a cool little tune. I wish it was a bit more staging, but... For the time, she doesn't have to do anything, does she? Just look at her. Her whole image, her voice, the tune of the song, the vocal arrangement was great too. Après toi. 
Oh, I like this. The emotion, this song. She's got a good stage presence about her as well. There's something there. Ooh, number one. First of 20 in 83. The power is real, but that tacky swaying, that's also real. Look at her. Look at that emotion in her face. Like my face. It says everything. You can tell a lot of the artistry and the passion comes from her face as a performer. Over! Wow, I'm so happy that I had a little look at Luxembourg. I love that most of the songs are in French. We need more native languages at Eurovision. A lot of those songs are really good. What I loved about it is that they were emotional ballads. And you can tell just by looking at the performers, they love what they're doing. They've got so much passion and emotion in their faces. And you can tell that they're there for a purpose. They're not just some hillbilly that's just turned up and decided to sing a song for the sake of it. They are there with every fibre of their being and for the times that the songs came out, they were pretty cool. They didn't sound dated to me. My favourite out of the bunch, which probably, it's not dated, but it's got an era about it. 1965, France Gale. She really had that whole swinging 60s vibe about her. And the music, it was kind of orchestra, kind of bossa nova bassy, but it wasn't like, ugh, this sounds old. It was really retro and cool. I loved it. I really enjoyed looking into Luxembourg because they, like I said, I had no idea what to expect. I've never heard them before. And coming first five times, there was some class about it. Some of those songs were so sophisticated with sublime instrumentation. Can we just talk about the orchestral moments? A lot of those songs had great orchestra moments. And it's an element I would love to see brought back into modern day Eurovision. Hashtag bring back the orchestra. So really, I don't think there's one in there that I didn't like. I think they're all pretty likeable. They stick out quite a lot because they don't follow a formula of a song. They've got different elements and quirky moments that really make them stand out. But guys, that's just my opinion. What did you think? Please leave all of your opinions down below in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think of Luxembourg, considering we haven't seen them for so long. Would you like to see them come back or did you think that their songs weren't really down your street? Please let me know everything down below. And if you enjoyed that video and you're liking Flashback Fridays, don't you forget to hit that like button to show me that you want to see some more. But also, if you hit that subscribe button and that little bell notification button, You'll be able to keep up to date with all the other videos that I have to bring you. Nobody wants to miss out. I get FOMO. Fear of missing out. It's not very nice. I don't want you to have that. And guys, important announcement. I have a brand new track called Feel coming out next Friday. Here it is. And you can check it out on all online retailers as of next Friday, the 12th of June. So please, if you fancy it, give it a little listen. I would love to know your thoughts on my music. Anyway, that's all for me, guys. All that's left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. Please look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.